Hello and Happy New Year everyone! In today's episode I want to feature a new software project called STM32 Template. And that's a well, template project that lets you use all the various open inverter library functions in your own projects on the STM32. And I'm also now featuring some branding. Birthday present. Yeah, so um, what got this uh, template project started was um, Damien's work on a universal VCU and he decided to build it up upon the existing open inverter infrastructure, uh, which has uh, the advantage that you can use, I will do a screen capture later, that you can use the web interface and uh, yeah, the can mapping and all various things. So today I'm going to show you how to use the template uh, on some example. What I have here on my rather busy desk is a Tesla charger. And I decided that I should be rewriting the software because it's got an STM32 processor on there. And I thought it would come in handy to uh, use the Wi-Fi module, which is somewhere here. Um, in the way that I'm used to and also to use the can mapping as you see I've done a bit of modification to route the CAN bus outside of the enclosure. Yes, um, I will go and start a screen capture and we will talk over the various steps of starting your own project, STM32 project, based on the template. So. Let's start uh, on GitHub, and you can find the template on JSP Hypno STM32 template. I'm not exactly sure if you need to fork it to your own repository to make use of it, or if you can just use it from my repository. Uh, whichever way, um, we click use this template, and then it asks us for a name, STM32 test charger. And then I can enter some description and create a repository from template. I'm not going to repeat that now. Um, but basically what you end up with is a directory like this. You have a readme file which you can edit. You have a make file um, uh, and a code blocks project file. And then there's various source files and two libraries tied in as submodules. Um, in here. So what that means, um, before you can start working, A, you have to install a, an ARM compiler using, for example, this command line on um, yeah, Debian flavors like Linux Mint or Ubuntu. And then you have to type make get debs, which gets the submodules I just showed you, and compiles them. And then finally, <clears throat> whenever you want to make your actual project, you type make. Um, <clears throat> if you don't want to type make, um, what happens if you open the project file is the make command is already specified in the options. So if you just press build here, you can see down below, it makes that by itself. Now, I've already made a couple of changes and um, <clears throat> I'll just uh, go over them. So, like I said, the project comes with a make file that basically tells, um, yeah, it contains the various commands on, on how to compile the individual files and how to link them together to one final binary. And it's got a couple of variables. Um, most important one is the I'll call it control. So basically control is the name of your project. Uh, this originates from the sign project where you had sign and fog control methods and you could compile two different binaries. Well now the control is charger. Um, I've added some custom flags in here which are not too important and you can also see I added an additional object file in here. That's whenever you add a new class or a new module um, <clears throat> say like 
my module cpp and my module h you have to add my module dot o object in this list objects l of objects to compile yes and that's all you need to do in the make file i've removed some redundant stuff but you can also leave it in there it doesn't hurt uh, next up, analog inputs. Uh, pretty simple on the Tesla charger, there's just one. And that's on PA0, GPIOA pin 0. So we just removed uh, the existing test entry and replaced it by um, our actual entry. Uh, our actual entry, yes, and uh, gave it a more reasonable name. And it's a bit more busy on the digital inputs and outputs. <coughs> Again, I've removed uh, the test entry here. Um, the LED looks removed, but it's actually just uh, been moved down there and moved to a different pin. And then we have two more digital inputs and quite a lot of digital outputs. So, and... Um, yeah, I guess the pattern should be uh, pretty clear. You get uh, it's, this is for example PC13, GPOC, GPO13, and it's being used as an output. Yes, and the name um, right here will be used in our code to actually talk to the pin. We will see that in a minute. <coughs> you can see I also made some changes to the hardware definitions file um, because now we are using a whatever C8 something um, like a processor with a smaller flash than the original project. It's just got hundred, uh, just got 64k of flash um, as opposed to 128k that the project assumes. So here we change the addresses where to save the can mapping and the parameters the saved parameters they move, were moved further down into the 64k region of the flash so now they start at fc00 instead of 1fc00 yeah um and now the file that you will also be working with quite a lot is the parameter file. That's where you declare all the parameters that your software project has. So you can see I added a big charger section here that has yeah various charger parameters. So it's it's always like category, which is defined down below. Um, then the name of your parameter, which is also used in the code to reference it, an optional unit, which can also be an enumeration. We will see that down below as well. Minimum value, maximum value, and a default. And the default is always used if you start up a new, or if you flash the software to a new processor, it will have no saved parameters. So it will save, it will load defaults instead. And then back here, uh, you can see every parameter has a unique ID, which we need to keep track of. And I do this in the comment up here. Um, because that identifies the parameter in flash memory. Um, there's quite a lot of software projects out there that will just uh, dump a, yeah, like a, an array to the flash and load that array. But if you add new parameters somewhere in between, you can no longer load your old parameters and you're screwed. Yeah, so here every name is associated with this ID and thereby we can uh, load the parameters even if you upgrade from version 100 to version 10 or whatever. If, if the ID stays the same, it can always load save parameters. Good, removed some test entries here, added quite a lot of um, spot values. You can see also the spot values have unique IDs and they're not safe to flash, but you can map them to the CAN interface. <coughs> and then you need to somehow remember what you map to, uh, to CAN 
even the same topic here if you add new spot values. So it wouldn't be a good idea to to use the enum value in the in the can mapping. Instead, you're using a unique ID again. And then down here, you can see uh, we added various constants, like set here is an enum of on charger flags. You know, so this is how an enum is declared. It's a value, the integer value, and then the string it corresponds to, comma, and the next one. Yes, and I've also added the same enums for use in code down below. Good. Next, we look at hardware initialization. Um, so we've made some changes here. We we are not using timer four, but in, in its place we are using timer three. Um, and uh, just for some context, we're using timer three to measure the pulse width of the pilot signal of type two charging stations. Um, they output a like a, a one kilohertz PWM signal, and its duty cycle is proportional to the maximum current that the EBSE can deliver. <coughs> and correspondingly, sorry, <coughs> I haven't made a video in a long time, and my voice is not used to talking that much anymore. Um, yeah, so uh, we have changed the code that the template comes with. It comes with some PWM generation code, but we want to do PWM reading. So this has all been removed and replaced by this uh, green code. Um, I won't go over it in detail. Um, yeah. Let's just skip ahead to main, which I will also not go over in detail. See, we've added some. That's, that has seen the most changes. Um, I've stolen code from Damien's original implementation and basically pasted that in here. Um, here you can see what I mentioned earlier, how we want to reference the various digital IOs by dig IO and then a double 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 point no what's it called colon double, double colon whatever um, and then the name we have specified earlier and then the function we want to execute in this case clear means uh, set the pin to low zero um, okay various functions and uh, whatever 100 millisecond task, uh, we just reuse that from the template. Um, yeah, this could be pretty interesting. Like in the original code, there was like a long switch case statement to handle the various scan messages from the charger. Um, and here we are using the facilities of the CAN module to just map um, yeah, data from the incoming CAN messages to our spot values. Um, yeah. So I have, we have uh, different gains here. Um, I've also for this project actually modified the CAN module to be able to handle offsets, in this case uh, for temperature. We need to subtract 40 degrees, or 40 to arrive at actual degrees centigrade. And likewise, we do um, we handle sending messages to the chargers. Uh, so there's no real custom CAN code in here. We just use the existing facilities to send and receive from the CAN bus. Um, yeah, this function is uh, quite interesting. It is called whenever the user changes a parameter. So you can react to the parameter change. So here we just have a switch case. Uh, so if someone changes the controller gains, this is propagated to our DC current controller. And if somebody changes the yeah the DC current, this is also propagated to the DC current controller. Um, yeah, and then uh, we are pretty much done. 
Um, I have had to call GPIO primary remap because the CAN bus isn't on its standard uh, pins, but it's been remapped to the alternative pins on GPIOB. Yeah, so we have to call remap, and you you can also only you should also only call remap once with all remaps you want to do because you have to specify all remap fla flags here. You can't like call it twice and specify different remaps because they will overwrite each other. Okay, we also make sure because at startup no parameters are changed, but we still want to propagate them to the controller in this case. So we call this sort of manually. Um, I have again extended the CAN uh, module to accommodate for the remap. Um, yeah, we initialize this. And that's pretty much all the changes uh, we had to make to change from a template to a working software project. Good, so um, next we can take a look uh, that this is actually working. So here in our creative mess, we have a can tool thingy and connects to the CAN bus right here using very reliable wiring methods. Um, and we also have super reliable uh, crocodile clamps to simulate the pilot signal and the cable limit resistor. Um, yeah, and that all ends up uh, right here. So let's uh, see what it does. You can see our EVSE limits uh, the AC current to 30 amps and the cable limits AC current to 32 amps. And we can have a play with that. So if we change the duty cycle of this, you can see how it, the EVSE limit drops accordingly. And likewise, I think if I raise this value, the cable limit actually drops, if I remember correctly. Yeah, this is how demonstration has to work. Oh yeah, here we go. So now the cable just supports 20. Good. And we should go back to 32, yeah. Um, so, so much for the analog inputs. <coughs> now let's look at the CAN inputs. So you can see right now, um, all is uh, zero because the charges are not actually powered, so they're not sending any CAN messages, but we can simulate some CAN data using Savvy CAN. So you can already see that our board is pumping out messages uh, for the charges already. And now we see what happens if we simulate a charger. I haven't tested that before the recording, so let's see what happens. Yeah, not so bad. So we're simulating um, that the charger is enabled, um, that it sees an AC voltage of 208 volts and um, whoops, and a DC current of um, 4.93 amps. Yeah, and uh, yeah, if you want, you can just have a quick play with that. Let's double the current. DC current should now read like, I don't know, 9 amps or something. Um, yeah, so much for 9 amps. Um, yeah, I hope you got the idea anyway. Yes, so this is uh, the project actually working. I hope you learned something today. I hope you, uh, I can motivate you to use this template or framework for your own STM32 software project. And yeah, if you do, let us know in the forum what you've uh, come up with. I would too happy, be happy to, happy to see that. <laughs> yeah, um, that's it for today and for the new year. Um, I guess I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.